On this episode, we are going to build a do-it-yourself air conditioner. Now, there's two basic flavors to these things. There's the El Cheapo Living Paycheck to Paycheck version, and then there's a version that's a little bit more expensive that uses pumps and a transmission cooler and a blower fan to achieve a much greater cooling effect as well as having the ice and everything inside of this air conditioner last a lot, lot longer. But what we're going to do is we are going to build the El Cheapo version. Actually, we're not going to build it. I'm going to show you how I built mine. Now, this particular one that I'm going to show you today cost $15 to build. And the reason why we're doing this is because the other day I was rooting around on the internet and I came across an article over there on theblaze.com. And here it is. This is uh, an article by a fellow by the name of Mike Opikia. Not sure if I'm pronouncing his last name right, but you can see his name right there on the screen. And the title of his article is, Can You Really Beat the Heat with a $20 Do-It-Yourself Air Conditioner? And they gave it a try. And the article says, It's hot, and according to the National Heat Map from the United States Weather Service, the heat is sweeping all across the country. Las Vegas is expected to smash an all-time high. I'm not sure if this particular type of air conditioner would work in that environment, but it may. Now, he uh, built one of these, uh, and he says, uh, We discovered an easy way to beat the heat without breaking the bank, and it's a very clever way to do it. And we're going to show you that here on the show. And he continues on and says, While it's doubtful you could cool an entire house with this ice chest AC unit, it does appear to be an easy way to add some cool air to any room. And this is what one version of this uh, styrofoam ice chest uh, cooler looks like. And this is what we are going to build today on this episode of the show. So let's get to it, shall we? The hydraulic empire that we live in is the empire of oil. give up your dreams of freedom because to save our own skins we're willing to make a deal with your slave masters. Alexander Hamilton said a nation which can prefer disgrace to danger is prepared for a master and deserves one. Now there are several different types of coolers that you can use to build this type of an air conditioner. If you are really serious about it, you can get one of these more expensive coolers. This one right here happens to be a five-day cooler. You fill it up most of the way with ice, and it will keep food cold in a refrigerated state for five full days. But these are a little bit expensive, and most people don't want to start cutting holes in their coolers if they can help it. So what most people do is they go out and they get something like this, which is a styrofoam cooler. Now, this particular cooler comes from Omaha Steaks. It's what they ship 
their frozen food in. There's some dry ice in there, and they pack the food there in there with it, and it stays cold during transit. And the reason why I like using these is because this is how thick the styrofoam is. That is a full inch of styrofoam. That is a lot of styrofoam. So what I'm going to do is put together my do-it-yourself El Cheapo air conditioner here, and we're going to go through it step by step so that you can duplicate these instructions. Alrighty, so the first thing that you're going to need, of course, when you're building one of these air conditioners is you're going to need ice like this. Now, what we use is we use empty water bottles, drink bottles, Gatorade, Zero Water, whatever you want, and we keep these frozen in the freezer. I have two batches this size, one that is in the freezer right now, and one that is going to be thawing out in a portable air conditioner. Also, what I've done is I've gotten myself a tray like this. I have cut the bottom out of the cooler, just like this. So, you take the cooler and set it in there. The reason why I did that is as the ice evaporates, or specifically these frozen bottles, they get condensation on them. And if you get condensation inside of here, you're blowing the condensation around, and you're actually increasing the humidity in the air, which sort of defeats the purpose of an air conditioner. So I have it so that the water drains out into this little tub. In the side of the styrofoam cooler, I have cut a hole just like this. This hole is the exhaust. Rather than having the exhaust come out the top, because your air goes down, it impacts the ice, and then it comes back up and comes out there. That's not very efficient. If you have the air so that it goes through the ice and comes out, that is more efficient. So the next step is to take the water bottles, and we'll just go ahead and place them in there. I put them on their sides so I can get much more in there, a lot more in there. And here we go. I'm going to throw these in here like this and throw the ice bottles in here. And there we go. You can use ice packs, but ice packs don't last nearly as long as this frozen water does. So there we go. We have all of the ice water in there and we're ready to go. And here is the lid that the fan sits in. And here is the fan that we use. Now, this fan right here, this is a 12 volt fan. It's designed for camping. It runs, it can run off of the power outlet in your vehicle so that you can use this in your vehicle. I got this at Walmart way back in 2005. It cost me about $12. And you can see right here, there's a speed control for it. And I already have this hooked up to a 12 volt power outlet, but we're not going to be using that in this particular case. Instead, what we're going to be doing is plugging it into a 12 volt power supply just like that, and the fan is running. The fan sits in here, on here like this, and the cold air is now blowing out the side. And I can demonstrate this with a handy big lighter, and you can see that the air coming out blows out the lighter. You can see that it is quite a bit of air that's coming out of there. So, let's take our thermometer, our electronic thermometer, and tape the sensor to the side of it here, just like that, so that we can see what the temperature is. Let me get this up here, just like that. Now uh, you can see the top number is the temperature of the room, 73.1 degrees, and you can see the air coming out 
is dropping rapidly. This will drop down to about 50 degrees. While we're waiting for it to drop down, I am going to do a better job of taping the sensor to the side. Because the way the taping of the show has gone so far, I fully expect it to fall on the floor at any second. You would think, doing a simple project like this, I would be able to do it forthwith and without a lot of difficulty. Unfortunately, this has taken about 47 takes to do. Now, I've got the fan on low speed. It doesn't really matter if it's on high or low. The amount of air that flows out of it is dictated by the size of the opening. So, let's take a look here. And you can see the air is down to 60 degrees now. And it continues to drop at a fairly rapid clip. It's now down to 60.3. And it will hit 59 in just a second. There we go. We're now at 59 degrees. And it continues to drop. It'll drop down to about 56 degrees when you first turn it on. Now, there is another methodology that I want to try with this. And that is this. <coughs> now, as the air goes into the cooler, you can see that it's going to go straight out the hole in the bottom. There's no deflection or anything else in there. It's not what I would think of as being very efficient. So what I did was, as I took another piece of styrofoam and I cut a notch in it like this, the same size as the opening here, so that I can put it over the ice in there and place the fan back on there, just like that. There's still nice cold air coming out the side here at the same rate as before. But now the air is has no place to go but through that little hole and go across like this. Rather than going down and out, it is going across like that. So now you can see that we are at 58 degrees, 58.1, uh, 58.0, 57, 57 degrees. Now, in a vehicle, having this air blowing out of that little hole, 57 degrees, you do a pretty good job of cooling the interior of a vehicle as you're driving down the road, even on a very hot day. That's because we're using a 12-volt fan, and it will uh, cool things down quite nicely. And we use it in, in this room that we're in right now, the uh, broadcast studio, the only broadcast studio in the world with a workbench. We're now down to 56.7 degrees coming out of there, and it is continuing to drop, 56.5, 56.3. It is dropping at an ever-rapid rate. It's interesting to see exactly how far this is going to drop. You can see the upper temperature going up. This is a very sensitive thermometer, and my hand is causing the temperature to go up. 56.3 degrees, 56.2. It is still continuing to drop. 56 even. Well, we hit 55. Let's see. We will hit 55 degrees. Come on, 55. Come on, 55. 55 degrees, 55.8. How do you like that? So, there you go. That is the demonstration of this particular ice chest, our do-it-yourself air conditioner. And as I said before, if you were to take something like this, fill it up almost all the way with ice, put water in there, put a little pump in there, pump it through a transmission cooler that sits on the top and have the fan blow through the transmission cooler, it'll be much more efficient. It'll actually work even better than this, but that'll cost you around $50. So let's go over the cost. The water bottles I had originally bought to drink the water. I drink a lot of these during the day. So basically no cost because I had bought them already. The cost to freeze the water is probably 50 cents in electricity a day, 
which is not that much, certainly less than running a window air conditioner or a central air conditioner unit. The fan cost me $12, and it is 12 volts, so you can either plug it into the wall with a 12 volt adapter, or you can run it off the power outlet in your vehicle. So, and the Omaha Steaks cooler was free. So now we're down to 12 bucks on building one of these. We are now at 55.44 degrees. Look at this, folks. 54 degrees coming out of there. And it's continuing to drop. So obviously, having this diverter that I built in there is causing it to be even more efficient than it was before. And there you go. That's about it. So until the next exciting Bell Zan do-it-yourself half-make project, my name is Bell Zan. Have a nice day.